I promise you, I have put something on the end of this video that is worth watching. That's completely different to the topic I'm about to talk about, because this is now the end of the video that I've just shown in at the front. So, watch till the end, viewers. Cheers, Kev. And uh, enjoy this one. See you in a bit. One, one? Yes, yeah, working, I think. We're on the two thing, yeah. I set up, I thought I'd set up in the dog park, it's easier. It's just, I can get everything set up here and I can go for a wander. Bit of a weird one for you today. Stick with me if you want to. I completely understand if you don't, which is normal. I think we'll go for the wander. Rollo, come on. You come in? Come on, mate. <clears throat> Come on. Good lad, let's go. Let's get out of here first. Just wait there, wait there. Let's get you on the lead. Let's put you on the lead. Wait, 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 wait. Ah, ah, stay there. Stay there. We had um We had an episode about a week ago. There's only about three beaches in Tenerife where the dogs can allow to go swimming. And this is not one of them. But Rollo and his wisdom when he was off his lead, when we were about half a mile away, decided, yeah, sod it, I'm going. So he just legged it. Oh, there's another dog there. So he legged it. We'll go down this way instead. So he legged it straight into the sea, middle of the day. All the uh, people on the beach. I just followed the laughing. Do you remember that YouTube video where that guy's running after his dog going after the deer shouting, Benton or Renton? Benton, Benton! 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 But there is no way on this earth I'm doing that. Wait, wait, let me sort this out. Come here, come here. Mate, come here. That's better. Um, got him on a short lead at the moment. The walk's just started, so he's pulling like a... Pulling like a that I used to say, which he is. Uh, he'll calm down. First of all, we start with a little bit of an embarrassing story that was... Um, it wasn't the best when I was young, I was in primary school, and I remember for some reason we had to do a test, I don't even know what the test was, but it's a written test on paper. Come here, you need to work out which way you're going, so I'll put you on, which lead i put you on, which hand. Um, and there was a milk bottle half full, that was a picture. He said, this milk bottle is half full. You're clicking again. Yeah, you stay there, mate, you stay there, you good lad. Let's get you worked out, let's get that, that's better. This milk bottle is half full. If the milk bottle, gets placed on its side, how will the milk look? It's a very, very straightforward, simple question. And I got it wrong. So much so that I got called into the headmaster's office. The reason being was because at the time, I think I struggled with lateral thinking. I wasn't very much a lateral thinker. And I think, I'm not gonna say it's plagued me all my life, but I just always remember that. I always remember that and I think to myself, what do I need to do? You know, how do I get that away from that? I've just got a load of kids crying. Holidays look like that. Still not bad yet. We'll just get past these. Too much with the dog. I need to control the dog rather than the kids. <laughs> Nearly there. The trouble is when you do these nice walks is you can't really, hey, yeah, bah, yeah, little sod. When you do these nice walks, you can't really take him off his lead because there's too many people with other dogs as well, plus the sea. But it wears him out. He drags 15 stone round with him behind him, so it'll wear him out. Um, yeah, so I got called to headmaster's office for that, which gave me the idea, really, all the way through. I've always remembered that, something that stuck with me. I remember the fact that I think, OK, I'm not really a lateral thinker. I need to try and work on that and stuff. I think I think you have in time. But the naivety... Man, I'm going to have to swap leads again. Come here, get over there, swap hands. Come here, sit there. There you go. The... Um, the naivety is what was embarrassing when I look back on it. And I think I've lived most of my life that way, with the naivety. The thing is, like, it was only up until about 10 years ago, I was having a chat the other day with uh, Alan Fraser, and um, I was having a chat with Alan Fraser and Darren John. And uh, I said to them all honestly, I said, look, I only believed mainstream news up until about 10 years ago. I believed that what was told on the news was as said. It's only really since I came away from 
TV and onto YouTube that I've started having a completely different thought about the world and about how it works and how people are. And then this is what I was saying to him yesterday, which is really quite interesting. It's about sometimes I'm really pleased that I think this way differently now. But on the other hand, if I didn't, my life maybe would be so much easier and so much naive. The naivety would work a lot better. You know, look at this here. Look, I've got people on top of the hill. I've got a woman coming down with two dogs. I've got a woman with a dog off the lead, which I think I know that dog. And this, I've got him on a short lead who is just like, he can see everything. If I took him off his lead now, there'd be carnage and chaos. So we're going to be fun. These women with the yeah, two dogs, she's got longer leads as well. So, Plus, I'm also trying to talk to you, which is the embarrassing factor of trying to talk in public, which you all know. So the dog off the lead's gone to the dog with the two leads. At least, not important, you don't even know that. So it brings me onto the factor of what I call... It's very exciting. The conspiracy theorist. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I read Twitter a lot. I do believe there's a place in the world for conspiracy theories, but I don't believe... A conspiracy theorist is somebody who doesn't necessarily believe. It's just he's prepared to look at the other side of the argument, I think. And that's me as well. I'm prepared to look at the other side of the argument. I'm just going slow so that uh, the dogs can work themselves out. I was on Twitter this morning and um, one, of the, one of the pages that I follow come, brings up facts and I've just fact checked this, it's correct. There's a conspiracy theory at the moment that Bill and Hillary Clinton in the last 30 years, 57 of their people in their inner circle have died mysteriously. I was like, what is that? Let's see how it goes with these dogs now. Morning. Yeah, she knows that, he, he knows this one. He knows this one. He's all right with this one. <laughs> Morning. Come on, let's get past. He's very heightened. So at 57 of Hillary Clinton, Bill, Bill and Hillary Clinton's inner circle have died mysteriously. Plane crashes, suicides, including Jeffrey Epstein as well. Which is just bizarre. How are you, love? You all right? I'm all right. <laughs> it's very happy to see everybody today. <laughs> um, that's just bizarre, isn't it? When you think about that. 57. So I got straight off Twitter, went onto the internet, Googled it, and sure enough, there's a big enough report. So there's another dog coming with a black lab now. For fuck's sake. Um, Googled it. And there's numerous reports of concerning this conspiracy theory, but no proof. So, it's just, you go to yourself, do you know what it is? In our world, if I had five people in my inner circle that had died under suspicious circumstances, you'd be like, can we get the police involved, please, and find out what's going on? When you've got, was it 37? No, 50, 57. When you've got 57 of them over the space of 30 years. You're thinking, what is that for a number? What is that for a number? That's bizarre, isn't it? So, at the moment, the reason why, obviously, a lot of the stuff's algorithms, right? When you're on these, like, short-form content websites, it's algorithms. And the, the main algorithm at the moment is all about the Hawaiian Maui fire. He's doing his business. See you in a minute. It's not bad enough, there's two freaking dogs behind me. He's had to do his business and then my hands are full. Well, there we go. The Hawaiian fires. Incredible. Obviously a massive catastrophe, very, very sad. But then the, the conspiracy theorists around it are saying, hang on a minute, in Maui, the government have passed a plan only a few months back to turn Maui into one of the world's first smart cities. And they got opposed by every, no, the majority of the residents who've inherited the land over years from their ancestors. And then all of a sudden, this massive fire occurs 
massive fire occurs the day they turn the water off so there's no water for the firefighters even though the military is 20 minutes away by air no military turns up for a day and a half roads get blocked I've even heard that the the police chief who's involved is the same one the police chief who's involved is the same one that was involved in the Vegas shooting that's what they say they're just basing these on they're saying these are facts I've not fact checked this but it's like these are facts that I'm hearing and it's uh, when the Vegas shooting was there nobody was ever found no killers were found no gunman was found apparently yet all these people died but this police chief has also become the coroner so he's the only person that can identify the bodies now two seconds just put him in this in the bench there there you go um, the coroner he's become the coroner so no uh, he's the only person who can identify the bodies and determine and determine the cause of death and there's a big comedy thing going on on Twitter at the moment where you've got people imitating celebrities painting the houses blue because they reckon that the fire was started by a big laser that's when you start to lose me and the blue and uh, look the laser doesn't penetrate the blue paint that they were putting on the roofs but then you've just seen um, a, a vlog of Oprah Winfrey and The Rock asking for 10 you know to raise 10 million for charity towards the people in Maui and the backlash that they're receiving because like it's like the richest woman in the world's asking for money you know um, also it's like you know they're, they're saying they're pledging 10 million but they're not they're actually pledging 10 million through normal people to give and donate so it's not actually their own money and it's just all a bit I, I, I'm wondering why that's happening now I think is it, is it because of the form of short form content creates this is it just baloney don't get me wrong I, I, I still have that open I don't genuinely go no that's because that, that, I see it therefore it must be the case but it is interesting that a different shade is being brought on this um, compared to what mainstream media um, takes thinks that we should all then take for granted so that's uh, that was one of them that I found he loves the banana plantations he absolutely loves it I'm sweating by the way absolutely dripping because he's pulling like you wouldn't believe but get a dog they said we didn't train him we didn't train him properly he's soft as anything and we love him to bit so even though he annoys us sometimes so that was one that I was uh, listening to I was also here's another one conspiracy theory I got down a rabbit you know if you go down a rabbit hole that's what it comes down to you actually go down a rabbit hole and you go how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go look at this banana anyone that's the banana plantation there. That's where they all are, banana trees. How far down, a bar, how far down the rabbit hole do you really want to go? The other one, this is, this is a great one. Before us, there was an ancient civilization that is far superior in intelligence than ourselves. Far superior. They were that superior, they were able to engineer the pyramids. They were able to engineer, is it Machu Picchu? I don't know. But they were able to engineer these amazing structures that we still haven't... Let's just stick with the pyramids that we, that we can't work out and understand and comprehend. This civilization were then since wiped out, like the ones destroyed themselves. And we are the remnants left over, almost like starting again but we haven't, so therefore we haven't got the ability to work out how the pyramids were done in those days, in the age of technology that they had, unless they had far superior technology. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's not true. But you might be watching this going, yeah, this is a load of shit, Rick, I'm, t I'm turning off on this. And if you do, I get it. But this is how my brain works and I can't help it. I find it interesting. A different hypothesis, a different thought pattern to think about it and then the, the ultimate one the ultimate one of all then brings you obviously if you're going to be a conspiracy theorist 
it's all about the aliens, isn't it? Do you believe? Do you believe? <laughs> to be honest with you, I've got two things on this. It started off, <clears throat> I listened to a Joe Rogan pro podcast, and it was about a reporter who is a, um, I'm going to say UFO hunter, but he's, uh, he, he looks into strange phenomena. Come on. He looks into strange phenomena. And it's, um, he's done a film, and the film's done really well called Moment of First Contact, and it was based on fact in a village in Brazil, where half, it's in the 90s, where literally half the village think they saw something of um, strange phenomena. And he's documented it really, really well. And I watched it. I listened to the podcast first, and then I watched it. And it, I'm like, wow, that's interesting. But then he's like, well, is that it? But then after that, now since then, because he's, uh, he gets so many varied guests on, I'm currently listening to an interview that he's doing with a cosmologist who's won a Nobel Peace Prize. And he's talking about the universe, the size of the universe, the multiverse, Galileo, Sir Isaac Newton, obviously, uh, very heavily about Galileo. And it is, I'm finding it absolutely fascinating. It's just completely, something completely different to what I listen to. The waves are impressive today. I'll show you this, two seconds. Let me just get this spinning me around. Come here. Look at this. It's a beautiful, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Look at this. See the waves coming in here. It always happens when I do this with the waves. You see, I've just had two great waves. So you try and set up a third one, and then it just all calms because of the tidal structures. It's gone. Look at that man, gone. Ridiculous. Happens all the time. Happens all the time. So, he was talking about the fact that uh, he started, he literally, he started his interview really, really well. He started off with a telescope and just said, look, this telescope's cost 50 quid. And you can get this from uh, eBay or you can get this from any, uh, any site. He says, when you look through this, you get to see exactly the same thing. You get to see history, you get to see what Galileo saw. And then he started explaining about Galileo, who, in fairness, most of you just like me, you've only ever heard of him in the Queen song. I have actually heard of Galileo, but I only Galileo, Galileo. And it's... Uh, it's, it just it, it just sucked me in. The guy's obviously a fantastic storyteller of the way he explains the simplicity of cosmology, astrophysics, to somebody like a simpleton like me. And it's got me really interested. So much so that I definitely think I'm going to be doing a Tady by Night tour. Um, I think that's going to be on the cards. Whether I do that as a present for a Christmas or for a, a birthday present, just something special, because I think it is going to be something special uh, when you get up there. I've never done Tady by Night. Never done it. I've been up there in the morning when the sun was coming up, but I've never actually gone up there. I went up there once when there was supposed to be an asteroid uh, f um, asteroid um, shower, but I didn't see one. I'm so sorry, pulling me everywhere. I didn't see one uh, because the tailback, I was stuck in like a, a six mile tailback, pitch black, a bit dreary, and all I could see were the brake lights of the cars in front. Meanwhile, my daughter was out the back shouting, I've just seen another shooting star. There's another shooting star she saw about, God knows. How many? She saw about 12, 13. In my life, I've never seen a shooting star. So there's another thing, bucket list, that I need to do. Um, but because of that, that's all of a sudden that's got me into this idea. So I realise now, or I'm starting to realise, the vastness of the universe, the solar system, multiple solar systems. I've not even finished this yet, and he's talk, already talking about uh, the possibility of a multiverse which is just incredible. I'm just looking out to see if there's any more dogs now. Which, uh, it's just the thought of that. So bizarre. And it's just all, I think, I think really it's in the last two years, my th lateral thinking that I had as a kid when I couldn't even work out how a milk bottle would look half filled if it fell on its side. I think it's changed that much that's given me, come on, up, you going up? No, up, your legs going up there. Uh, it's changed so much that um, I'm starting to see the world, I think, in a different light. And the fact about the conspiracy theorists, sorry, conspiracy theories, 
a lot of people just go, oh, that's just mumbo jumbo. And even I do it, that did it for, always done. But now I'm starting to look at it, I do genuinely believe there's, you know, there's something, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world that's not being told to us or hidden from us. And there's a lot of stuff in the world that's not right and not good, where there's definitely a difference between the rich and the poor, the celebrities and the politicians, you know, the celebrities and the normal, the politicians and the, uh, and the normal people. And what annoys the crap out of me is that all those years, my naivety, I just went along with it. And then the fact is you go to yourself, you know, would you do something, would you have done something about it? Or even though when you knew this knowledge, just let it ride? Or would you um, prefer to have not gone down the rabbit hole in the first place? And that's the truth, isn't it? That's the truth. So, how many minutes have we been on? That's about a 20 minute. That's not bad. I don't want to finish on that one. I want to finish on a little bit of a, a bit of a happier note. I created a vlog, no, I created a, as you explained that, I created a video for Dylan's Bar uh, about what we do. We had a, we've got TV screens, on the TV screens we've normally just got photographs on there. And decided I wanted to do a video, because people ask me a lot what it's like, how it goes, what do you think of it. So I created this video, right? The trouble is, the music I've got on there is Gala, Free From Desire. Now if I put that on now, what will happen is, this video will get copyrighted, and um, it can't get monetized then. And that three euros 35 that I might earn off it, I'd lose it. Two seconds. Penny wise, pound foolish. Sweating the dog out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start the song off, and I'm going to put the text, I'm going to put the video on, and I want you to sing along to it in your head. Because I'm going to have no sound on it, but then the sound comes later on in it, just stick with it, the sound comes later on. And I want you to try and imagine Gala freed from desire in the background. You all know the song. Remember, my lover's got no money, he's got his strong beliefs. Right, okay, so you ready for this? I'm going to finish with this one for you. As always, you know what to do. Just a quick one before we do that, before we do this. It might have been brought to attention this week that um, some of you that have subscribed to the Rick and Shelley channel think that you're automatically subscribed to the Just Rick channel. That is not the case. So if you are a Rick and Shelley subscriber and you're watching this, do us a favour, subscribe to this channel as well for me, please, if you could. Stick done in the comments so I know you've done it. It'd be really nice. So, anyway, I'm going to leave you this one. As always, you know what to do. Here we go. You ready? My lover's got the money. He's got his strong beliefs. My lover's got no faith. One more and more. party in it we have a bit of a laugh down there hope you enjoyed that enjoy the rest of your week i'll see you on the next one guys as always you know what to do cheers paul